And good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. Great. Right. Awesome. It's so good to see all y'all happy faces <laughs> this morning. So prayer requests and praise report. I know we've got um, someone that's not feeling well, so please lift him up in prayer. My son, he's had a migraine since Thursday. Son's had a migraine since Thursday. Okay. My son has got COVID, and my grandson does too. Okay, so son and grandson with COVID. Okay, we'll lift them up in prayer. And my papa. And your papa. It's cold, but um, just pray that people will bring him food. Okay. Good food, because he's going to end up back in the hospital again. Okay. What, diabetes? No, he just has, um, he was dehydrated because mm -hmm. he's just, well, he drank, was drinking water when I was checking on him all the time, drinking water, but it's just not enough, I guess. Okay, okay. And then he eats junk food because people <coughs> bring him whatever he says he wants, but he don't need to eat that. He's gotcha. He's eating better food. Gotcha. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we think we're doing people a favor? Yeah, we take care of him. I, well, I mean, uh, he wants sweets. I, I just going to give him sweets, and it's like, it's killing him. Mm -hmm. Peaches, you know pumpkin I mean? pie, a little bit of it all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, uh, and it's like, but you're actually making it worse. Yeah, he, I'm, I'm the bite he need, to pull it out. needs <laughs> smoothies. But who wants smoothies with this cold weather right now? Wait for it to warm up, and then you want smoothies. Who? Your dad? No, anybody. Oh. Smoothies. You can put all kind of stuff in it. Oh, yeah. Fruit and vegetables, you know, blend. And, anyway. Oh, good. Right. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, um, got an alternator we was talking about that needs fixing. So yep, that's prayer for happening that. today. So hopefully no hiccups. Got car issues. I'd like a prayer for that too. For me, not that I go very far, very often, but <laughs> it's nice to have it when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for having mine every day. Yes, yes. And the Elliot family, uh, lift them up. Um, I have. Uh, not spoken to them this in the last couple of weeks. I will be reaching out to them this week to find out how things are looking because I know they were talking about going back uh, the beginning of the oh, year. Oh. Last I heard they were still here. I hadn't seen uh, um, but um, and if, if you want to follow them or anything if you let us know after you know words I, I, are, are y'all following them or friends with them on Facebook so that you no. Uh, well, you can get their information when give it to you. It's no problem. I mean, you keep up with what's going on. You send a uh, friend request and, you know, go from there. Um, anybody else? You have a praise report. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, put me oh, on yes, the spot. You can do that when it's your kid. <laughs> you had a, a, a couple of friends that were having issues that is kind of resolved. Oh, yeah. That's a praise report. I mean, because that's, you know, we've been praying for friends that haven't, you know, not don't have the head screwed on right. Friends get their pains off the walls. Yeah, friends having issues. So, and they, they kind of, two friends, not him. Well, anyway, two friends, and they kind of work things. I, I, that's a praise report, because I've been praying for that, you know. And I, I, I know y'all have too, so. Yes, sir, ma'am. Friends and family know the word. For friends and family to know the word. Amen. For lost family members. Yes. You, if you're sick, you don't have to go to the doctor. Faith of mustard seed will put you right there in the spot with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's a very good. All right. I got one. Yes. I even uh, got one. I, got, I finally got a termination date for myself. Okay, right. so it, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in uh, end date for his current position. There you go. So, because he's not oh. leaving the company, he's just like step stepping, stepping back. To, um, uh, a to relief, a relief. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay, I thought he didn't already step back. Well, okay. well we're supposed to. I no, mean, been like need. five weeks ago when he told. Him, so but they need they've him. asked him for two more weeks. So, oh, okay. that's exciting. So, um, you know, yes, ma'am. It's more of an end of service thing, but will you just out loud pray against the spirit of like fatigue? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, fatigue. Man, I like that. <laughs> and so I'm go I'm gonna pray. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray, but today when when I get done praying, I'm not going to say amen. And if you feel led of the spirit to pray, uh, if, if there's something I've left off, something that's on your heart, please just raise your hand, and I'll come stand beside you, and uh, you can continue to pray. Okay. So, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the weather. I really enjoyed yesterday's weather. It was beautiful. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come together and fellowship and to worship you and to learn about your word and to study your word and dig deeper. God, I uh, thank you for church family. I uh, pray that you never allow me to or any of us to take for granted the opportunity um, to come together because in some places they're not able. And Lord, I, I just I, I thank you for that. And right now we lift up all the prayer requests that have been mentioned um, those that are sick, those that are in need, those that have got um, things going on in their uh, life, those that are lost and don't know you, Lord, family members um, that, that have not come to the knowledge of you. God, we, just, we ask that you open their eyes, open their hearts, draw them. Um, your word says that no one can come to the Father unless the Spirit draws them. Lord, we ask that you that the Spirit draw them, that they they get they they become more inquisitive, they more longing for information about who you are and and what you are. God, we just uh, if if we're to be vessels to plant seeds, Lord, let our our mouths and our words be uh, befitting to what you would have us to say. Uh, let the timing be right. Um, we come against spirits that would hinder those that, that you are drawing, Lord, that the enemy is trying to steal. Your word says to snatch them out from the flames, Lord, and we don't want anyone, we don't, we don't want anyone to go to hell, God. So uh, we thank you for what you're going to do. Right now we lift up um, our brother that is sick today um, uh, with whatever he's got going. Lord, we just ask that you burn it out. We ask that whatever spirit's trying to attack him would come against it now in the name of Jesus. Whatever spirit is, is attacking and causing fatigue for anyone in the ministry, anyone that's listening, in the name of Jesus, we, we bind the spirit of fatigue and we command you in the name of Jesus, we don't want you. And if you're listening, you say this in your heart, I don't want a spirit of fatigue. If there's a spirit of fatigue in me, you come out now in the name of Jesus. You have no right. Lord, we, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your authority that you've given us. Uh, we ask that you be with us as, as we study your word. God, shut my mouth when it needs to be shut, open it when it needs to be open, and push me out of the way and, and allow me to say what you need to be heard. I love you. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, nobody raised their hand, so. All right, so today we're going to talk about how to talk to God. Sounds simple, right? If you've been a Christian for a long time, yeah, you know, you may have that kind of check. I'm good with that. But I think sometimes we need refreshing, uh, refreshing in how we, we are to approach God, how we are um, to address him and how we are to um, to speak to him. And um, who thinks the disciples were pretty smart? Um that they chose to follow, to follow. I added an R to that word. I'm still in my age. They chose to follow Jesus Christ. That's pretty darn smart because uh, we watched an episode of The Chosen last night, and so I, I love that series. If you've never watched it, um, it's a great, great series. I, I like the way they portray the, the disciples and stuff, but they... Um, uh, last night was the episode where um, Peter was fishing and hadn't caught anything all night long. The Romans were coming to get him the next morning because he had taxes that he had not paid. And um, Jesus was on the shore when they came to shore, and he told him to cast his net on the other side. And he caught all this fish, and then he left. He left. Um, one of the... Um, uh, his friend's fathers actually said, I'll straighten up your debt. I'll take the fish to market and, and, and fix, you know, straighten up your debt with uh, the Romans. And um, he asked Jesus, he, he said, I'll do anything you want me to do. And he said, follow me. And, you know, it, it takes courage. It takes strength. It takes a lot of sacrifice to follow Jesus. It did for him. 
-hmm. So it, it, Peter had, I mean, like he was not successful, obviously, at this time with his fishing or either poor management of his finances. Either way, he had some issues. <laughs> but but his whole life, all of his friends, I mean, like that's what they, they were fishermen. That, that was his livelihood. I mean, he had family, uh, family that, you know, um, that, uh, that that was their life was fishing and when Jesus said follow me he, he doesn't he didn't he, he didn't even look back I mean like in the, the the representation that we watch from the chosen and granted this is someone else's um, so when you do watch series and stuff you do need to make sure does it line up with scripture some of it is the the uh, readers interpretation and then they made the movie out of it so you know you have to be careful with that but I mean like it kind of lines up because I don't think the disciples were like these supernatural gifted just you know talented not untouchable people you know because when you read the stories of them you see their their faults you know Peter's you know he he had his yes if they were that awesome they probably wouldn't have been fishermen if they were that awesome the they probably wouldn't have been fishermen um so um okay so having said all that the reason I say all that is because I'd like for everybody to turn to Luke. Um, I think it's Luke. Hmm. No, I'm sorry. It's Matthew. Yeah, Luke's on there first. I do have Luke on there. Um, I'm going to have to backtrack uh, to that one. Backslide, I'm going to backtrack to that one. <laughs> Not backslide. <laughs> Not backslide, but back, backslide. backtrack. 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 Yeah, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Okay, well, you didn't put it on the front one, so I'll turn around. So, um, and that Matthew, it starts off um, in, in 9, uh, but I want to, Matthew, Mark, Luke. I'm going to read just a scripture or two right before that. And we are talking about Matthew 6. Um, I love this light, y'all. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm not. Anyway, the, 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 I gave the example about the disciples because the disciple came, they came to Jesus and they said, you know, Master, teach us how to pray. They knew that he prayed with authority. They saw when he prayed, it was not the recited. They had been raised up and they knew they had prayers from the Torah that they recited, that they had specific prayers that they prayed. Well, and um, when they listened to Jesus praying, that they knew he prayed with like authority. He prayed um, with power. And so they, they come to him, Lord, how do we pray? Okay, so if the disciples who are following Jesus, you know, Jesus Christ, they're, they're following him, they had to ask him how to pray. They had learned, memorized Torah. They'd been doing what they were supposed to be doing. And, and, and then they're asking him how to pray. Well, if they are following him and they're there physically with him and they ask him to pray, do we not need to examine how we should pray and make sure that we're praying correctly? So anyway, so Matthew 6, 9, th Jesus says this. And when you pray... You must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues. Um, oh. Um, and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward in secret. Um. So, the Lord's Prayer. Um, am I in the room? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, and then, so, um, I was really excited, y'all. I was reading from five, in case y'all kind of figure out. I'm, oh, that was six, five. Um, so, okay, I'm going to say you started ahead. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm completely lost this morning for some reason. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to continue on. I'm on seven. So sorry, Jason, back there for 
The scripture ain't matching on the screen. <laughs> and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Okay, so you know this um, prayers that rout demons and, and, and prayers that, you know, overcomers prayers and stuff. There's nothing wrong with reading and, and getting the idea of how someone else prays because Jesus gave an example, but this is Jesus. This is not a man. This is God reading in God in, in the flesh. So um, be very careful about re reciting prayers because, I mean, he's talking about that. They, it says that they, um, they're the many words and stuff, and, and it's not about that. It's about your heart. Um, and so when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do recited script uh, prayers I'm just saying you know it that's empty phrases you know because it's not your heart mm -hmm. I mean that's not to say you can't read someone else's prayer and take it to heart you can you can but it needs to come from the heart does it, does it make sense mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm not saying that you know reading someone else's prayers and then praying that prayer is necessarily a bad thing what gets to be a bad thing is when that's how you talk to God let me sit down and read this prayer to God, and that's your fellowship with God, because that that's not that's someone else's that's someone else's heart to God. Um, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Okay, so God knows what we need before we pray, uh, before we ask. So, just because this has went through my mind, so I know it's probably went through other people's mind. At least I hope I'm not the only one. Um, how many ha have thought to themselves, well, if God already knows, why do I need to even ask? That's the natural because, question. Yes. Because he wants to know, and he wants to hear it from your heart rather than him, because he can read your mind. He would rather hear you say it. He'd rather hear or, you say it. Or you're, you're, you're requesting as a father for him to answer your prayers. Rather than just reading your mind and knowing what you want. Yes. Yes. Very good. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Right. If he knows you need it, why do you have not because you ask not? Because you're to ask. Yeah, you're to ask. Did somebody have their hand up? Oh, okay. I thought I saw a hand go up. So, so we, I mean, <laughs> I mean, scripturally, we are told to ask. You have not because you ask not. That means ask. <coughs> um... <coughs> Okay, so pray like this. So um, when our words have power, so we, there, there's life and death in the tongue. And so we can speak curses as Christians. You can pray curses. Your prayers can be a curse. Yes. You know, someone does you wrong and, you know, um, I, you know I, I pray that Lord um, strike you down or what, whatever. That's a little bit strong. But I mean, like you do pray, uh, they go get what they do, what's coming to them and that stuff, you know, Lord, you know, should, that is not, that is not what the Bible tells us to do. It says to love your enemies, to pray for your enemies. So if someone, the, those that spitefully use you, we are to pray for them. So if someone's hurt you, if someone's made you mad, if someone does you wrong, we're not just pray curses. The Bible says there's life and death in the world. All scripture lines up. So if you speak, um, and, and I'll give an example. Hold on, don't get in trouble in my household for doing this. <laughs> but so our cat is really pushing boundaries and really infuriating us. And so, you know, I had a talk with, with one of them last night, one of the three. You don't know which one I talked to. And she was very receptive. <laughs> so I was talking because she said something, and I said, you know, I said, we have, we have, there's power in our words. And so if you keep saying you stupid cat and you throw throwing off on him, and he is pushing boundaries. He is infuriating us. Um, you know, really bad, get on the counters, and, you know, if you leave something out for a split second, he's eating it. I mean, so it's, you know, it's, it's. It's pushing. <laughs> I mean, like, really, walk around hot. I mean, just I really. So it, it's, and it's not typical for him, and he's an older cat, so we have not had this issue. This is something new. Um, I think the cat needs deliverance. But anyway, um, <laughs> we, may, we may have to tend to that. But the thing of it is, if you speak death over him, if you speak curses over him, we're in error for that if you do that. I mean, like, and it's, it's hard. You get caught up in the moment. They push your buttons. I mean, a, a person, uh, enemies or whatever, and you, you want to retaliate with your tongue. But the Bible says there's life and death in the tongue. So we are supposed to, you know, God, show me what you're trying to teach me in this situation. And right now it's about a cat. You know, so uh, this is what, I mean, I, this is a little bit of rabbit trouble, but this is what I'm 
saying that I feel like he's teaching us right now. You don't leave anything laying out. You pick up behind yourself very well because it, it, it you know, so you don't leave, it, you know, even if you put the bowl down in the sink, he gets in the sink and, and licks out the bowl and uh, that's nasty. We don't, we don't like that. So, uh, anyway, so there, there is something to learn. So I know that's a cat issue and that's not seem like a big thing to some people but that's an example of your other relationships mm -hmm. somebody pushes your button they're going you uh, we had another situation where for months having issues with a person I mean and it's none of y'all okay so <laughs> but I mean like just like tensions were high I mean like to the point you kind of want to avoid them because it's not a fun situation they're not a fun person to be around because they're just so on edge and stuff and you know this goes on for months and months and it's like you know the 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 flesh wants to say just cut your losses and just move on um, but that's not always the case and you know as as things come out you find out months and months after you've been dealing with this and have you taken it to God have you taken it to your friends and your fellow Christians and asked them to pray with you about it and then you know and then all of a sudden one day you find out that there was this major situation going on in their life and you had no clue and that's why they their disposition and their their antsiness or aggressiveness or whatever they were experiencing towards you it felt like it was towards you but it was because of something else going on in their life we don't know that and so um you know, I'm going on like a bunch of different rabbit trails this morning, but that's how I do it. So I'm sorry. But anyway, so the point is, when someone's doesn't, when something doesn't seem right, even with your animals, uh, be aware that um, you, there is you have authority. You have authority, and what we speak, we speak it into existence. Mm -hmm. You can speak um, good things over yourself. You can speak negative things over yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, if you feel like that, you, you know, you're an idiot and, um, you know, Jason likes that word. So, but, but he don't call himself, <laughs> but, but, well, no, I mean, that's the word part of him. <laughs> um, but, you know, be, be very mindful. I mean, there's one thing for using words for joking and cutting up, but when you seriously in your heart mean it, be careful because you will, you will, um, speak curses over yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting back on top track. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. This is fun. Okay, so the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and Jesus said, and this is Jesus. Um, great idea to have a Bible that has Jesus' words in red. Um, if, if you're looking for a Bible, I highly encourage you to try to find one because you know really quick that's Jesus speaking. And that is, um, that is what we want to focus on, all of it, but really in tune to what Jesus says. He said, then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And that's Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Um, you know, the, the last thing that I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to jump. Yeah, because I like jumping around. Eight. So y'all just tell me I haven't done this. Memorize scripture. And you memorize scripture because um, it's the most important key to vibrant prayer because you're, you're praying back God, your word says. And so you're, you're speaking, and there's example after example in the Bible of people that have prayed to God, and, and, and he, tells, he tells us, you know, um, remind God of the promises that he's promised you. You know, because um, he's not a God that would lie. He's not a God that would go back on, on his word. Um, but when you remind him of his promises, you're reminding yourself and you're standing on what he said. He's not going to go back on his word, but the enemy sure will try to steal it. So, um, and hinder it and slow it down and, you know, take you down trails. Um, okay, so when you start praying that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, like I said, that is a great one. If you're listening, if you're here, um, that should be one that you want to be able to spit off. I like the King James Version. I, that's not the version that's on my paper here, so... I didn't read it like it was on paper, but I love the King James Version because I just, that's what I grew up and I learned that one on that. I read the ESV. That's my favorite one now because it makes the most sense to me when I'm reading. I don't feel like I'm reading a foreign language. Um, but memorize it in what, whatever scripture, you know, whatever version that works best for you. And this is a good one. And it's not because this is, people do pray this prayer to God and it, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but he said, then this is how you, um, let's see, that is... 
Oh, let's see. Pray then like this. Now, that's ESV, and that's Matthew 6, um, 9. Pray like this. He didn't say <laughs> pray this. He said pray like this. So you want to you wanna break down the Lord's Prayer. Why does he say like this? The first part, we're going to break it down in parts. Um, the first part is um, our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name. Okay, know to whom you speak. When you go up to somebody, hey, Brandon, guess what? Okay, I said his name first. You know, we don't just say, guess what? You know, sometimes you do, if you've already been talking, but if you hadn't seen somebody, there's a big crowd, you address who you're speaking to. So we want to address who is God, our Father who art in heaven. Lord, I love you. I mean, Lord, I mean, it doesn't have to be a long, lengthy thing. Address God. Address who you're speaking to. Uh, prayer is a conversation with God, and every conversation begins by addressing the person to whom you're speaking by name. Jesus began with our Father in heaven. Um, he focused on a distinct person, the Heavenly Father, whom he had personal relationship. I found interesting when I was doing this, this study and stuff, um, we had actually, uh, if you ever listened to Ask for Me in My House, not trying to put a plug in for that, but... There you go, I did anyway. Um, we had a discussion about who you're supposed to pray to. Are you supposed to pray to Jesus? Are you supposed to pray to God? Are you supposed to pray to the Holy Spirit? They're three in one. So um, who are we supposed to pray to? I don't think it really matters. I pray to Jesus. You pray to Jesus. I, fed, I, I, I For the longest time, I'm getting you hold your thought. That's right there. I know, I'm, 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 that, that's good. Um, I, I, for the longest time, Lord. But in my mind, when you see, watch the stories and all, they refer to Jesus as Lord. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking Jesus when I pray Lord. What were you going to say? I always pray Lord, too, because that way I know it's covered. Um, <laughs> but Jesus says, pray like this, our Father in heaven. But he says anything you ask in my name. Before that show, I think I often prayed to Jesus, and I avoided praying to the Father, like I didn't know how to, but now I know I'm supposed to pray to the Father, through the Son, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Um, and, you know... These are. This is something that you you want to ask yourself and examine how you know Jesus's example was our Father. So, um, but yeah, I like the way you worded that. You pray pray to to God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. With the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 I, I like that. Okay. Two. The second part. Um, Thank him. A heartfelt thank you is always a great conversation starter. Who doesn't like that? If somebody comes up to you, hey, hey, Deborah, I just want to thank you so much for that dessert you brought here a while back, that quiche. It was great. You know, when you thank somebody, I mean, like, it just, we're supposed to have a heart of thankfulness. Right. So, anyway. Um, three, ask for God's will. We get caught up in our will. You know, I want this, I need this, because we think we got it. But we're taking back from God what we're supposed to be giving God. If you sacrifice, not sacrifice, but if you've given your life, and I don't mean your physical life, but in, in your heart, if you're giving your life to God, use me. Um, that sounded funny real quick. But anyway, if, if you're asking God, you tell him, I want to be your servant. I want to do what your will. I want to be used by you. If you're giving your will over, not your life, but your will over to God, don't take it back. Continue to give it to him. Continue to ask him, what is your desire for me? What is your will for me? Do you ever, when you read that and apply it, do you ever feel guilty for asking things that you want? Oh, Are yes. Even, like convicted about it a little? Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, because me neither, Jason. The Bible says you should do the <laughs> desires of your heart. Exactly. Right. Well, the, this is the thing. For me, I, I, I guess I, I for me some sometimes I in the um, and I have had um, spells or periods where I feel like all I'm doing is asking, asking, asking. That's when I start feeling guilty, mm -hmm. okay. it, and then I have to the guiltiness with that. It's because you're not thinking them enough in my experience. And so spend 
that's why this is a great example of how to pray is because remember to thank him. That was the second thing. The first thing we talked, address, thank him, and then ask for his will. And so I want your will. You know, this is my, I, I have prayed to him before, Lord, I, I, this is what I want. This is what I like you for, um, Tina, <laughs> just thank you. <laughs> you. You had a situation at work where, where we prayed and, uh, you know, a couple of us came together and we prayed for cancellation of, uh, of a, a project or, you know, something. something. Yeah, I'm trying to be vague. Um, at work because of different, you know, and that, that's, that was your desire and your will. God just like tell them that they don't want this anymore, that I, I can not, it doesn't need to be done, Right. But at the end of that, but nonetheless, God, your will. So, so our, our desire, God won't, you have not because you ask not. So if we had not asked for that, maybe that wouldn't have happened. I, you know, maybe it would have continued. She would have had to continue with it. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, I, I think typically I don't have a problem asking God for things. But I can also say that I have felt conviction before if it becomes unbalanced and now I'm not praying for other people and God has reminded me and that's, you know, we're, oh, okay, yeah, you know, because there's some people that have some needs and I'm aware of it and yes. that's, I need to be focusing on that as well. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Um, okay. Um, cause I, I'm running out of time. So I'm kind of Skim through the rest of this. I got about five, four minutes or less. Um, so, if, if you want to discuss more, we can. Um, if you have any comments, we can discuss it in intermission after uh, after Sunday school. Um, ask God's will. Say what you need. You know, you you tell God this is when we were praying together. Um, God, this is this is a this is a need. This is a desire. Tell Him what you need. Ask for forgiveness. If we're not, if we ask for forgiveness for our sins, um, ask for, for forgiveness where we've messed up, where we went astray, where we have, um, like what you said, if you have a tendency to get too self-focused and then you start feeling guilty, you know, uh, you know, then it's time to step out. Let's step back and let's see um, who God may need us praying for because Satan will have you so con self-consumed that you don't see the, the hurt. And the people that are just broken around you that need so much prayer lifted up. Not necessarily for you to even do anything where they're concerned, but spiritually lift them up in the spirit realm. Um, pray with a friend. There's power in agreement when, when we pray in Jesus' name. Um, so pray in agreement. Pray the word. This is where it's important to memorize scripture. I'm not a... I'm not the best at it, um, at memorizing scripture. Read scripture, read your, read the word, start planting a little bit here and there in your heart, um, and in your mind. And when, when God needs to bring it to your mind, it's there, it's there. The Holy Spirit, I've heard people argue that, you know, well, God can put it in your mind without you having to read it. Well, yes, he can. But the Bible also said to sh work to show yourself approved. Do what? That's it. Mm -hmm. Study, study to show yourself uh, approved. Mm -hmm. um, is that correct? Is that how? Okay. Um, so, so there is work to be done. Or it's not. Let me just sit back. Okay. You know, yeah, he can use you in time, like that, but you've got to be in right relationship. And who has days or weeks even where you're just not as close to God as you want to be? You kind of get caught up in the world. I mean, like. I do it, you know, and then it's like, Lord, I haven't spent enough time with you. And so those weeks when you when you are not as close to him, you're not spending as much quality time with him. When you've got the word in, that's when he can pop it in your mind and get you back in the right relationship with him. I'm not saying that you've like completely went off the reservation, but you just kind of get caught up in your everyday life. It happens. And when that happens, if you've got the word in you, he can pull it back out of you when 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 it's needed. Um, so pray the word. Um the Word of God has power and is our great spiritual weapon. Jesus prayed, yet were, um, he prayed when, when he was in the desert and he was tempted for the 40 days. He, re, he quoted, this is a great example, y'all. He quoted scripture back to Satan. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus did it and we're supposed to emulate him, quote scripture back. And of course, we already covered uh, memorized scripture. So... Uh, you can do some more studying on this. You know, pray and ask God to give you discernment, show you the Lord's Prayer, what He wants you to get out of it. Um, Matthew chapter um, 6 is awesome. I like it. I like a bunch of them. But anyway, does anybody have any questions? 
I went way over last week. I'm not doing it this week. So, anyway, all right, I'll close this up in prayer. If y'all want to talk some more afterwards, you know, if anybody's got anything they want to add, we can do that. And if we have some really good discussion, I'm sorry, you should have been here. But anyway, all right, uh, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for, for your son that you sent to take the penalty for our sins, God. Um, thank you for the uh, example through him that we have and I thank you for the time that we live uh, because you put us in, 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 in this world for the time that it is help us to walk in your footsteps help us to seek you in everything we do help us to put you first we love you in Jesus name Amen, Amen.